Hey, thanks so much for finding the video. Do us a favor. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe. Be sure to leave your comment. We love to interact. Enjoy the video. Let's look deeper at the Bulldogs. This transition to the air raid, as best you can tell, how's it gone? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, they feel like, you know, for all intents and purposes, they are on a schedule and, you know, parts of practice look really good, Matt. Um, and, and it's relative, right? Like I'm comparing it to recent years throwing the ball, which, you know, in the last two years under the previous staff, they just couldn't throw it. Uh, they couldn't do it consistently. You know, at times practice was a real mess. And so you kind of knew it. That's why they didn't have any confidence in the games. And, man, you go out there now, and it wasn't this way um, week one or day ten. But, man, uh, about week three and, a, you know, a month into this, you go out and you watch them. And it's really impressive the way they practice. you got Steve Springer Jr. coaching the outside receivers, Dave Nickel on the insides. and the reps, the number of reps that they get off in practice throwing a ball in a short period of time is really impressive. And now you go watch them and the number, volume of quality reps that they are getting off. Just, you know, they'll work on certain drills. You do it for half an hour. and You don't see any balls that are not catchable. You don't see receivers getting knocked off routes. Now, they're all going to face tougher competition Saturday than what they're facing in practice, frankly. But it is a tremendous improvement. You know, how quickly it manifests in these games, I don't know. I just know I'm watching a whole different ball game at practice than what we were seeing a year ago throwing the football. So I feel like they feel like they're on schedule. They just know it takes time to whip it into game shape, right? Like it's the difference between being in shape versus being in game shape. Mm -hmm. So they're just going to have to go play and, and kind of, you know, get going once they get a few games under the belt. Matt, we know Derek Stingley is going to be a, a chore for anybody. So yeah. uh, let's assume Derek takes away a half of the field. Do, what does mm -hmm. State's receiver depth look like? Yeah, they're, they're not as um, void of talent and um, – players at that position as a whole, Matt, that as some people might have led you to believe um, over the last couple of years, because you know, I keep going back to it because I think it is relevant what people think about that pass-catching group at State is um, affected by what we didn't see them do the last couple of years, right? Like They didn't catch many balls. Well, yeah. they didn't get a lot of opportunities to catch many balls. Um, they just wasn't in the air. And they had no confidence. So the group, while, you know, unproven, they've got potential, all that, there's players there, and they've got a pretty good group. Now, it's not as large a group of guys as, you know, they'll rotate in and out of games this year as they will next year once they recruit to it, right? Mm -hmm. But they've got in the neighborhood of eight to nine guys, outside and inside, that they like. And, you know, what you'll see is some new names that nobody really knows that are going to catch a bunch of balls. Um, a big, tall, long, NFL body type, tight end type of player named Jaquarius Spivey on the inside has been real good in practice. And they're going to throw it to him a bunch. Um, you know, the kid that transferred in from Alabama on the outside, Terrell Shavers, you know, a kid from Texas, uh, he caught one ball in his career at Alabama, couldn't get on the field. Mm -hmm. In the first couple of weeks at State, he was, it took him a while to find his motor. You know, and all of his legs were so dead after about 10 days of practice, all that running. Once he got his legs under him, he kind of found his motor. He's been really good the last couple of weeks, and he's a lot of, you know, he's got talent. So those are just examples. They've got about eight to nine guys they are going to rotate. They're going to throw them all the football. The idea in the offense is just take what the defense gives you. Matt Wyatt's with us. Um, what's the biggest question on the offense? Yeah, I think it's continuity. And it's, you know, again, we have, I mentioned kind of whipping it into shape. Here's what I think I would answer that is to give everybody the perspective that you probably need to have on that offense is most people around here, I'm not saying the team and coaches, I'm just saying most people around, we're kind of watching it, keeping our ears close to the ground. It's like, there's a feeling of it's sort of year zero, Matt. 
not year one, really. It kind of feels like year zero. And what I mean by that is, you know, coaching change, whole fail, offense and defense. Philosophy change on offense completely. New quarterback, right? Uh, everything's new, and you had no spring, barely an off season in the summer because of the pandemic. Push back the season. Practice has been different. You know all this stuff, and, and so I think you're asking me what's the you know the concern on the offense. The offense has players. They've got uh, a couple of guys in their offensive line that are going to play NFL football. They got Kylan Hill, who's a legit SEC back. Their pass catcher group is better than people realize. Their quarterback's a guy who two years ago was going to make the decision, do I come back for another year or go ahead and go to the NFL? K.J. Costello is on NFL radars right now whether he takes another snap or not. Okay, the talent's there. It's just, at what point does it go out there and operate as a machine? Right? It, it'd almost be like if you were to make an extreme comparison. Look at LSU two years ago versus last year on offense, right? right. Two years ago, a brand new Joe Burrow. At times, it's like they're running in sand. You know, they're trying to figure it out. They weren't bad, but they weren't great. And then all of a sudden, at one point, the light bulb comes on and they were unstoppable. You know, the, the offense has talent, but they're going to get one year at it. They're going to get one shot at it in a shortened season with no spring and no summer. So that's the question to me is how quickly can they develop some continuity? Uh, a couple more minutes with uh, Matt White. Former Mississippi State quarterback. He's on Twitter at Radio Wyatt. Multimedia guy. He's got a YouTube channel. Does great game breakout breakdowns. If you if you're an SEC fan, you got to be following Matt's and subscribe to Matt's YouTube channel because he does a great job with his film breakdowns. Of course, uh, daily radio there in the state of Mississippi. Um, we know that five of the top seven tacklers from a year ago on defense are gone, but Matt, there's still some names there. When I see like Errol Thompson, there's some names I recognize. Who's back on defense, and where's that strength going to be for the defensive unit? Yeah, Matt, look, it, the strength better be in the front six, front seven. You know, it's kind of one of these three, three stack defensive schemes, so it's really not a front seven. It's technically more like a front six, but, you know, it, regardless, you'll see three defensive linemen. And, it, and the strength better be up front in the way of, you know, good against the run, playing the run in the way the quarterback and pressuring quarterbacks. They better get home and get quarterbacks because if not, you know, people are going to eat their secondary up. Um, it, it's not that they don't have talent. They do. They're pretty decent at safety. Fred Peters and Marcus Murphy are, you know, um, legit SEC-type safeties. Martin Emerson played last year as a true freshman at one corner. He's really tall. But outside of that, just remember this. Outside of Martin Emerson, who's a true sophomore at one corner spot, Everybody else at cornerback in the entire cornerback depth chart is going to play their first football of their college career um, this year. It's all new. They had one kid transfer out at corner with the Florida State. They had another guy who was a veteran who opted out. They have nothing but new faces and young guys at corner. That's it. And they're going to take their lumps, no question, if you're not getting a pass rush. So that's a huge key. And that's why, Matt, I fully expect um, LSU in this ball game to especially early to run the football to neutralize any pass rush that is there to prove hey we're going to run it we're going to be able to run it because when that happens then they'll be able to pick and tears when they hit it down the field I expect LSU to come out there and run the ball and the dual purpose in that will be keeping you know uh, state's offense off the field and shortening the game sure um Couple more special teams. If if it comes down to it, maybe a quick thumbnail on how state look looks on special teams. Yeah, they like them and they're good and they work on it a lot. They've really made it a priority. Okay, they're putting their best players on all their special teams units. Brandon Ruiz is going to take over place kicking transfer in there from Arizona State. He's been really good uh, in their practices. Tucker Day, experienced punter. They they make a priority out of the special team stuff. And so the new guy is Brandon Ruiz, the kicker who they really like to transfer from Arizona State. All right, Matt, before you go, um, empty Death Valley. Uh, you know, you had a chance yeah. you had a chance to see a full Death Valley uh, as a player and certainly as a media member. Yeah. What what do you think empty de- – well, let me rephrase. It's not going to be empty, but you know, 20,000 yeah. fans there, 25,000 fans there about What do you think yeah. the atmosphere thereabouts or the lack of, of – of, a full Death Valley means for this game, if anything? It 
definitely makes a difference. No question about it. I mean, it's almost like, you know, you think about the difference of, that 20,000 fans will make. You know, you give me 20,000 LSU I'll take 20,000 LSU fans over 20,000 anybody else fans, maybe outside of state fans ringing cowbell. You mm-hmm. know, at least you're going to have some, and there will be noise, so there will be some electricity. I think that's one thing coaches probably are very thankful for. Even 20,000 in there, Matt, there's some electricity, and the players will feel that. But when you don't have any, when you have zero fans in some of these places, there's just no electricity, and you can't, you know, cover that up. So I'm glad there's going to be 20,000, but yes, the difference is there will be, I think, less of this big emotional highs and lows for both teams. The fans feed those emotional highs for the home team. They sometimes contribute to the big emotional downswing for the road team if something bad happens. I think it really takes away the home field advantage and just squarely puts it on, you know, uh, who are the four stars and five stars and who can be better across 60 minutes. He is Matt Wyatt. Uh, make sure you follow him on Twitter, at Radio Wyatt. Go subscribe to his YouTube channel as well. Uh, you can hear him on the radio weekdays there in Starkville from New, or in, in the state of Mississippi from noon to 2. Hey, um, what do you have an, a, uh, a, an expectation for, for your video releases for your game breakdowns? Yeah, um, I do. and It'll be a, an every week thing. Okay. And- It'll be two per. It'll be two per week, Matt. I, I do a Mississippi State video every week, and then I'll pick another SEC game every week, just depending on which big. And obviously, this week it'll be State and LSU. So because it's travel, most likely I'm looking at Tuesday uh, to get it released, and I'll put it out there on Twitter when that happens. Okay, make sure you. Fi- it's Matt White Media on YouTube. You like if yeah. you're if. Mississippi State, and if you love SEC football, like you need to go follow Matt's YouTube channel, subscribe because the video breakdowns are fantastic. Like you need to go subscribe to his page. Matt, we always appreciate the time, man. You're the best. Enjoy the game. Enjoy football on Saturday, man. We'll catch up down the road. All right. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate the uh, kind words, also. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact, and be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.